Welcome to A Course in Miracles, uh, on to a new chapter tonight, A Course in Miracles, text chapter 16, The Forgiveness of Illusions. So this chapter gets into bringing us into the awareness of what illusions are and how we behave, how, we illusion, how the illusion behaves in illusions, making illusions real. And it's asking us to get back into first mover advantage at that point where the I am recognizes the I thought, the individual separate I thought, and it says, step back, sink in, return to, abide in God. And it's, it's going to challenge us on ideas that become value systems, beliefs in our dualistic, egocentric, understanding of our separate self, the separate self is we, there's a term called the death of self, that little self, death of ego. And at the stage of death of ego, those of you that have been through it or are going through it, you know, that's when the ego attacks aggressively. Remember ego active attack thought system, not an entity in dualism. They projected the entity outwards and gave, give it a name, Lucifer. Um, in non-duality, we, we comprehend the ego as the objectified tempter, the one that tempts us, the one that at some stage that thought appears and the thought, in, we engage the thought before we know it, we are the thought. And yet, where do thoughts appear? In the mind. What is the mind? What is aware of thought? And you say, the obvious answer is I'm aware of my thoughts. But who is that I? Is it a subject? Is it the object? Thought and object? Where is that thought experienced? In my mind. What is mind? Mind is a cluster of thoughts that have become belief. So it can't be thought aware of thought. The I is a thought, aware of thoughts. So what is aware of the I, aware of thoughts? That which is awareness itself. And even the word awareness in this case is a concession, but it's taking us in the right direction. Everything, the entire universe, the whole dream, the activity of the dream is mine, is called awareness. And when the dreamer, First mover advantage, the son of God, dreaming. When the dreamer becomes aware of himself, itself, and the activities of a dream, it's the awareness of being aware, aware of being aware. I am that I am. And then God takes the final step and brings us home. So 16.1 is a bit of a challenge for the empath. And You've heard me say this countless times, and this is where I'm getting it from. Never mind the fact that I realized that through my psychotherapy practices, how empathy was such an obstacle to peace and how the ego would appropriate our emotion, drag us into the object to whom we were giving our empathy our, and drag you both in. So it's like I would give the analogy. You're on a boat, your friend has dived in, your friend is drowning. You want to send the, the rescue, you call it life boy, onto the, you know, and pull him out. No, what you do is you dive back in and your friend can't swim and he's got you by the throat and you both drown. How's empathy helped you? You don't struggle, you don't suffer with them, you pull them out. And sometimes it requires fierce grace and very direct pulling them out to make them realize what they're going through. And it takes a certain gentleness, but also a certain directiveness. You've got to direct it out of it. True empathy. So we're not talking of just empathy. And the minute you label yourself an empath, you've labeled. And the minute you've labeled, the Tao that can be named is not the eternal Tao. So you're not an empath. You have empathy and you have a high sense of empathy which correctly seen is actually passion, 
passion for what's passion, love. So compassion with love. And so love with love be, gets appropriated by the ego identity and drags you into the, into the story and you bought into the story, pulls you straight down. And now you both suffer. Step above the battlefield. Call them home. And so the Christ mind is talking. So this is the mind of Christ infused with the Holy Spirit, the memory of God, and is saying, come let go of your little separate self-identity. Let go of those little labels, empath, compassionate, caring, lie, beautiful, kind, gentle, ego right mind, good ego appropriation. The true self has no human qualities. Humanness is ego. The true self, the son of God self, is simply pure light. And the highest comprehension we have of that unconditional love is the unconditional acceptance of what is, realizing that you and everyone else, what appears to be everyone else, activities in the dreamer's mind, are going through exactly what they need to go through. And if you blatantly honest with yourself, which you always have to be, should be, must be, you'll realize that it's your darkest nights, your darkest challenges, your most hurtful experiences that eventually got you to the what the fuck moment where you literally just say, okay, I'm not going to kill myself because that's just silly. But I now have no choice but to scream up at the heavens and like, Fuck, God, what were you thinking? And then the realization sinks in, but God, nothing to do with this. This is all me. What was I thinking? Next step level, next ownership, taking ownership of your own misery, self-created perpetual misery that you think it is perpetual, but it isn't. And then to say, surrender, there must be another way. And then you ask, show me another way. And this is where we are. We're saying, okay, now I think I understand. I stand under what? What do I stand under? Understand. I understand. What do I understand? You understand nothing. You're on the battlefield. You're understanding. Rise above the battlefield. And God, his voice speaks into the dream. His voice, capital V, Holy Spirit, memory of God in you. It's in you, calling you, because it's not outside you. If hearing a voice outside you, go to those nice little people that have those nice little buildings, wear those white, nice little, beautiful white coats, you know, and they've got those little stethoscopes around there, you know, and then sometimes they have a little lamp, and they prescribe you pills. And if those pills don't work, they put you into a nice little white room, which is nicely padded. It's only locked from the outside, and they put you there in a nice little white padded jacket, it zips up the back and then they leave you in that room until you stop hearing voices outside you. That's a psychosis. God's voice is inside you, it is inside that which is his son, you. And when it calls, it calls from within, not outside you. And it's calling and saying, hey, pay close attention. These things that you so value about what you think you are and the way you think you behave, which you've now appropriated as an identity, and then you and then you get part of the tribe called the empath. And then you attack the rest of the world and you denounce the world because everybody's horrible. There's so many arseholes out there, the eight type soul, arsehole. You know, they're all arseholes. You're the good soul. Your tribe, empaths are good souls. Beep, all cry together, you know, miserable. Empaths never achieve anything. They're just miserable. And then what do they do? Then they attack the world because we empaths are special. They have their own websites and Facebook profiles and it's all empathy and boo-hoo and puppies and uh, step out of it, step above it. Don't buy into any of these stories. So this is Holy Spirit saying to you, son of God, pay attention. To empathize does not mean to join in suffering for that is what you must Refuse to understand. You're going to go beyond understanding into the knowing. Refuse to understand. Don't try and figure it out. Don't try and study it. 
throw away. That is the ego's interpretation of empathy and is always used. Here it is, a last obstacle to peace to form a special relationship. Ooh, special. Empaths are special with special qualities because empaths feel. They don't think, they feel. Hey, hey, empath, you feel fuck all. You feel because you thought, but you think so fast, you don't realize you think, and then it filters through your body, mind, sensation, cellular level, and now you think you feel. You don't, not only don't think, you don't feel anything. So when you say you think, when you say you feel, it's the ego that thinks and feels, you don't. But if you think you're special and you think you feel, and you feel overwhelmed and you feel what, it, then stay in your misery, find another course teacher. This one doesn't listen to shit, okay? It's not for you. I don't, I'm not interested. I'm the, you know, when you, when you laugh, the world laughs with you. When you cry, you wet your face. That's it. You wet your face. No one loves someone. And they say miserable themselves because, you know, misery loves misery. Ooh, we all sit together and talk about our ex-husbands and how miserable they were and the politics and everything's just horrible and Satan is just a terrible woman because she holds a grudge for 2,000 fucking years. Can you believe it? She still hasn't forgiven Jesus. She made... Eve, because, I mean, Eve would not listen to a man eating an apple from a tree. Eve listened to a woman, and now they're both crying. Get out of it. Special relationships, you and your friends, you cry. And I tell you what, the ego is so clever that female friends even have their period at the same time of the month. Special relationships in which suffering is shared. Stop. The capacity, ooh, that capacity. I have such a capacity to feel that I, I walk into a room and I immediately feel the toxic people feel, hey, empath, toxic people there, you, you toxic, you see toxic, because toxic is the filter through which you see God is the light with which you see, but now you've gone and put your toxic filters up, your judgmental filters, and now you're special because you picked up the vibe, you've gone to Machi Puchu, oh, it's so spiritual. But then you've gone to the office block. Ooh, they're toxic people. Empath, all you, your shit. Put it down, okay? The capacity to empathize is very useful to the Holy Spirit, provided you let him use it his way, not your way. Boo! I've never seen Holy Spirit cry. I've never seen the Holy Spirit. But if I had, it doesn't have tears. He does not understand suffering and would have you teach. It is not understandable. It's nonsense. There is no such thing as suffering. Where's suffering? Awareness. Awareness of what? Past thoughts. Pulled into the present, regurgitated, projected. Where's suffering? Past, feared, future. Sin, fear, guilt. Stop. When he relates through you, in other words, you step out of the way, you let go, let God, he does not relate through your ego to other egos. He does not join in pain, understanding that healing pain is not accomplished by delusional attempts to enter into it and lighten it by sharing the delusion. Okay, and please believe me because the word illusion is Lewis with a little mispro mispronunciation. So I've paid a lot close attention to delusion. Okay. The clearest proof that empathy as the ego uses it is destructive lies in the fact that it is applied only to certain types of problems and in certain people. Because we don't empathize with Hitler. I mean, poor little Hitler. His mother was Austrian. She was treated like a slave. The Germans treated her really badly, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And little Hitler with his little mustache and his little paintbrush and his little artist, no one paid him attention. And he became a really angry little motherfucker. No empathy there. Mm -mm -mm. Mustache, no. But Charlie Chaplin, that looked exactly like it, leered himself. He was funny. We can empath. We can empathize with him. You know, 
we can empathize with a little puppy, but we don't empathize with the crocodile because puppy's good, crocodile's bad. Hmm? Yeah. This is how we play it out. Victims empathize. Bullies attack. Bullies need victims. Victims need bullies. As long as you are an empath, trapped in your emotional bondage, suffering like a suffering fool, long-suffering fool, the bullies are going to surround you because they're going to feed off your empathy. Give them like little cookies. Here's my empathy cookie. Stop it. Okay. These it selects out. Let's go and look for a boo. Let's go put it. Press play. When, what do empaths do when they're sad? Press play. Sad music. Cry a lot. Because they're special. They feel so they can cry. And crying is a good thing, you know. And today we're going to get little boys not to cry because, you know, everybody should cry. Everybody should be an empath. You know, let's all be woke and empathetic and love everybody and just get lost in the delusion. Step out of it. Rise above the battlefield. These it selects out and joins with. And it never joins ex except to strengthen itself in its misery. Okay, because then you want to be a special empath that will help suffering empaths, even though you're an empath and you suffer, but now you're special because you're helping others and you've now become a life coach or a spiritual coach or a spiritual mystic or an angel card reader or an angel lady. And now you're going to bring the empathetic angels who feel your pain and you're going to tell people how wonderful they are because they're suffering. Only a fool suffers. And awake, Christ does not. Make no mistake about this maneuver because the ego is very clever. The most intelligent person in the universe is not as clever as the ego. Because what is the most intelligent person in the universe? But one little ego in the whole arsenal of the ego. And remember the word ass is an arsenal. So what does the ego have? A whole lot of our souls in its arsenal, and it just plays it out, and you buy into all this shit, and then you get a box of tissues, okay? The ego always empathizes to weaken, and to weaken is always to attack. Must I carry on reading? I've had enough. Start crying here, okay? You do not know what empathizing means. Yet of this you may be sure. If you will merely sit quietly by, be still and know, I am. And let the Holy Spirit relate through you. You will empathize with strength, because that's called compassion. And will gain in strength and not weakness. Okay, so what does it mean, Lou? How, how do we empathize with strength? Well, the Holy Spirit knew we were going to ask the question. So... Your part is only to remember this. You do not want anything you value to come of a relationship. Because what do we want in this world? Value in a relationship. I value you. You completely. You know, you choose neither to hurt nor heal it. In your own way, you ask that it be done for you. You do not know, you do not know what healing is. Because if you did, we wouldn't be reading this. If you knew what healing was, you would be healed. And you certainly wouldn't be sitting here listening to me, okay, who's not quite healed yet, getting there. But if I was, I wouldn't be teaching. I'd be quiet. I'd be like Ramana Maharashi, sitting under a tree going, boom, chucky boom, chucky boom, walk up to the mountain, have a swim, walk back down, sit. People would come sit around him, and he would say, be still. That's it. So... All you have learned of empaths is empathy is of the past. And there is nothing from the past that you would share, for there is nothing from the past that you would keep. The past doesn't tell you anything new. It tells you the same old story over and over and over again and gives you no guidance how to get out of it. So why would you listen to your past? Why would you bring up the past? You know why? You want to be a victim. Look at me, I'm suffering. Ooh, I'm suffering. Ooh, hurt me in the past. I want to tell you a story. You notice when people dial in, they really just can't wait for me to go, okay, open and blah, tell their story, drag the past back in, tell you how they suffered, how horrible life was, 
and then tell you how they've transcended it while they wet their face. Yeah. No. Do not use empathy. That's not me. Holy Spirit said it. Do not use empathy to make the past real and so to perpetuate it because you get so stuck in it. And after a while, it's a wonderful book. It says, who would you be without your story? You'd be that. It wouldn't be you because there is no you. Step gently aside and let healing be done for you. Holy Spirit, show me another way. Sit with your friend that's struggling, suffering, crying, bereavement, someone's past. They've lost her, they break up, whatever the case, lost their job. They, they're overwhelmed by what's happening in the world. You sit with them, you hold them, Holy Spirit. You bring Holy Spirit in and you offer it. Be there. You don't have to speak, especially if you're a man. Shut up. Listen to the woman. Women are very good. They can be quiet with their friends. And we want to fix everything. Oh, give me the problem. I'll fix it. You don't have any clue how to fix a woman's problem. Never mind any problem. Shh, be still and know I am. Best teaching in the world. Shh. Revert always back to first principle. Be still and know I am. And then offer it to the Holy Spirit. And be very wary of this. And you've seen this in the tribe called female. This female is like, go. men go hunting, females go gathering. So now they gather information. And the minute you tell your story, boo, my boyfriend left me. He was such another asshole. He slept with my best friend. Yeah. What does your best friend do? Oh, that's so terrible. And then tell you their horrible story. Don't make it about yourself. You just be there. Be caring. Put your arm around them. Be compassionate. Just be there. Hold them. And say to them, this too shall pass. It's, you don't, and obviously when someone's grieving, you don't, oh, you know, oh, you don't worry, your mommy's happy because this is just an illusion. No one died. Just hold them. Be with them. Because at that moment when they feel that loss, the reason they're struggling is because they know not what they are. They know not what their mother is. Mother's gone to heaven. They're feeling separated. They're feeling the same experience we felt when we fell asleep and felt separated from our source, not knowing what our source was. Because when we fell asleep, we forgot where we come from, what we are, what God is. And we imagined, we imagined we must have been abandoned, rejected, weren't good enough. And therefore, we're going to be punished. Sin, fear, guilt. So when someone's bereaving, they are experiencing the full impact of sin, fear, guilt, separation. Stand by me. That's it. Just be there. Don't try and give advice. Don't tell them your story. Don't tell them everything. This too shall pass. You know, shut up. Be still and know. Jesus said, "Be still and know I am." Lewis said, "Shut the fuck up. Be quiet. Just shut up." Just stay there, hold them, be present, be supportive. Offer it to the Holy Spirit. Offer it to the Holy Spirit. Keep but one thought in mind and do not lose sight of it. However tempted you may be to judge any situation. Yes, he's an arsehole. Then they're back together next week and then you're the arsehole. Shut up. And to this, determine your response by judging it. Focus your mind only on this. Please pay attention. Again, reminder, straight from Holy Spirit, not from my mouth. I am not alone, and I would not intrude the past on my guest. I've invited him, and he is yeah. I need do nothing except not interfere. And that means to shut the fuck up. Just be still, be supportive, be present. Give it to the Holy Spirit. True empathy is of him. Please note, capital H, Holy Spirit, who knows what it is. You will learn his interpretation if you let him use your capacity, your present being for strength and not for weakness. Not so you can both. Okay. Stop chopping trees with tissues. Stop it. He will not desert you. Be sure that you, you desert him not. Humility is strength in this sense only. And it's the only time humility is 
strength. The rest of it is just weakness. It's just avoidance. It's running away. Okay. The grandeur of God in you, it's not human, human has got no humility. That's ego concept. But humility is strength in this sense only. That to recognize and accept the fact that you do not know is to recognize and accept the fact that he does know. How come? You are not sure that he will do his part because you have never, ever, ever done yours completely. You do it in part because you think you're, you're so clever. Ooh, look at me. I'm, I'm an empath and I, I've done a Reiki course and I've done a ayahuasca and a Kundalini and a I Ching and Kabbalah and be quiet. Hand it over. You cannot know how to respond to what you do not understand because you stand underneath an illusion. Be tempted not in this and yield not to the ego's triumph triumphant use of empathy for its glory because that's how it makes it. You believe you're special because you feel. Look, I can feel stuff. Stop feeling. You don't feel anything. The closest thing you have is to sense and to make sense, you've got to get out of your corp, head. It only makes sense of something when you get out of thought. The triumph of weakness is not what you would offer a brother, especially when they're struggling. And yet you recognize, you recognize not, but it, no triumph, but this. This is not knowledge. And the form of empathy which would bring this about is so distorted that it would imprison what it would release because it gets you both trapped in the suffering. The unredeemed us cannot redeem, yet they have a redeemer, capital R, Holy Spirit, Christ mind. Attempt to teach him not. Don't teach the Holy Spirit how to tackle something. Don't be like Lou when he was a little boy. He gets so angry with the projections of the Holy Spirit, which I saw as the angel beings. And I'd get so angry with him, constantly lecturing. You guys don't understand fuck all. Let me tell you how it works. <laughs> and they would just laugh. We'd just laugh. Of course, I realized there was no angels. It's just the Holy Spirit. But my fragmented perception was filtering pure light, and I was seeing what I thought was angels. That's it. There's, there, there are no angels. Surprise. Oh, Louis, that's too fast. Surprise. There are no angels. What do you think are angels? Is Holy Spirit. But because you imagined, you now give them wings and colors. In essence, only one messenger, your Holy Spirit. You are the learner. He, the teacher. Remember this. Apply it to me too, unless you know better. And the only way you're going to demonstrate you know better, demonstrate it. Do not confuse your role with his, for this will never bring peace to anyone. Offer your empathy to him, Holy Spirit, for it is his perception and his strength that you would share. And please note this course as highlighted and accentuated the word his strength, his perception. Because, of course, Holy Spirit is still using perception in the dream. Once we awaken, Holy Spirit, Spirit dissolves as our right mind, our Christ mind, and there's no more Holy Spirit. You are that which is the Holy Spirit of God. And let him offer you his strength and his perception to be shared through you, not by you. The meaning of love is not lost in any relationship that looks to weakness and hopes to find love there. Okay. The meaning of love is lost in any relationship. So all relationships looking for love, lost. And looks to weakness and hopes to find love there. Because love in this world is always transactional. And it's always needs bodies, needs friends, and bodies aren't enough. Two bodies got to get together. 11 minutes later, sticky bits, 30 years of hell, crying baby, ah, nonsense, because love's never enough. Okay. And relationships end because the one couldn't have a baby because love was never enough. So it's never enough. Can't just love one person. You've got to go and hang out with all their buddies as well. Can't just be present, be still, be here now. The power of love which is its meaning, lies in the strength of God. And therefore, the strength of God, the absence of bodies, 
Love is the absence of bodies that hovers over it and blesses it silently by enveloping completely it in healing wings, symbolically. There's no wings, okay? But the Force of Miracles says there's wings. There's no wings. It's symbolic. Let this be and do not try and substitute your miracle for this. What's your miracle? You know, hey, hands on Reiki. Ooh, I'm going to heal you. I'm going to take away the trauma. <laughs> like <laughs> this crystal. Let's put this crystal around your neck. It's going to heal you. <laughs> uh, we come up with some crazy stuff. Healing, Reiki. Ooh. I have said that if a brother asks a foolish thing, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> of you do it but oh, i love thank god he threw in but yeah because i was like dude no man no i have said that for brother asks a foolish thing of you do it fuck no holy spirit really says, Lewis, read on read on but <laughs> thank god thank you jesus but cert but be certain that does, <laughs> this does not mean to do <laughs> a foolish thing that would hurt you or him or you. So <laughs> dive into the fire. The Holy Spirit said, if my brother asks, I must do it. Dive. Oh, shit. Dude. You didn't read on. Only if it's stupid, don't do it. Okay. For <laughs> oh, God. For, for what would hurt one would hurt the other. So when you cry, you both cry, and then you both put your face, and the whole world just doesn't give a shit. <laughs> foolish requests are foolish merely because they they conflict, since they always contain some element of special specialness. Okay. <laughs> Only the Holy Spirit recognizes foolish needs as well as real ones, and He will teach you how to meet both without losing either. So you'll you'll show up, but it doesn't mean that. You'll have to do stupid things. Now, oh, you get it now. You got it, right? Careful. Because he knows how we think and how we process. Okay. Uh, I've heard you. This is what you're thinking. I've heard you. But let me see if I can sneak it. Let me, can I just maybe disguise? You know, because I like to cry. You know, I like the feel of tissues on my face and snot coming out of my nose when I boo, cry with you because especially our failed special love relationship. Ooh, that for good there. We love that tribe, you know, especially if the moon's up. Full moon, and then we're going to dance around the moon and do the ceremony of the moon. We all empathize, and our emotions are up. But now, now, ooh, let's see if we can sneak this one in. And he says, hey, hey, shh, listen closely. Listen, <laughs> you will attempt to do this only in secrecy. <laughs> Don't. And you will think that by meeting the needs of one, you do not jeopardize the other. Because you keep them separate and secret from each other. Yeah. And you just done what you've done right from the moment you fell asleep. That is not the way, for it leads not to life and truth. No need will long be left unmet. This is the true meaning of this two shall pass. If you leave them all to him, Holy Spirit, whose function is to meet them, that is his function and not yours, Mr. And Mrs. Empath. He will not meet them secretly. Take them straight on and show you why it's happening. For he would share everything you give through him. That is why he gives it, that it may be used and that it may lift you and transcend you into the knowing of what you are. What you give through him is for the whole sonship. When you heal, the sonship heals. When you heal a brother, you can only heal if you are. You can, and you can't heal. You bring him into the understanding and that's the closest you get. I can lead you to understanding. I cannot lead you to knowing. Your willingness combined by the pull of the Holy Spirit brings you to the knowing, the peace of God that transcends understanding into the knowing of our shared being with God. And the knowing, even the word knowing, is still in the realm of I am. It is beyond. It goes beyond even the I. I thought dissolves. The I am awareness dissolves and you return to God. Can't take you further than that. I haven't been there. Let no one ever tell you they know. Because we allude to, and bridge consciousness is the closest we get. And God takes the final step. Okay. 
What you give him through him is for the whole sonship, not for part of it. Leave him his function, for he will, he will fulfill it if you but ask him to enter all your relationships. Add all here, all relationships, and bless them for you. Amen. Press pause, rewind, listen again. It's that important. Let's stop there and we'll do some questions. We now continue with the Course in Miracles text, chapter 16, the forgiveness of illusions. So the forgiveness of illusions is the fundamental understanding of this course. The whole purpose of this course is a course in thought reversal, CNU. Know what you are, be thyself knowingly. And the process to get to that place where New understanding is brought in, new understanding to replace old concepts, beliefs, ideas, ideologies, value systems. It replaces it with Christ-minded value, right-minded, Christ-minded value. And the process to get there is forgiveness. Your only function in this world is to forgive illusions. So this is how powerful this part of this course is, because now it brings you into the understanding of the power of holiness, the real power that you have and are when you realize the self is you, the self, the son of God, that which is the shared being with God. So the you that it addresses is the dreamer, the localized projection of a body mind seeking for eternal happiness. And it says, okay, let's get rid of this idea that you're a body. And let's understand what you really are in truth and who should be paying attention and who should not. And what should you pay attention to and what should you not? So it says very cleverly here, you may still think, you don't think, <laughs> you don't actually think, but you may still think you think that holiness is impossible to understand because you cannot see how it can be extended to include everyone. See, the problem with dogma, religion, is that it includes the tribe. And then you have all these little tribes under certain names. Be careful, Course in Miracles, that you don't become a tribe. This course is not the end, but a beginning, one of many paths to, to the awakening. There's nothing special about this course. In actual fact, this course doesn't actually exist in true reality. There is no blue book. So be careful that we don't, we only extend it to, you know, our little tribes. And you have been told that it must include everyone to be holy. Now, this is how you do it. Concern yourself not with the extension of holiness. For the nature of miracles you do not and cannot understand while you're in body mind. You will never understand it, so you allow it to happen. And you call forth, because if you understood it, you wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be informed. And so you allow it to happen. And it happens by his command. He knows the script. So when you think you're going to go and heal someone, and that person's meant to go, because that's part of the script, and you're going to be disappointed, and you think the Holy Spirit's not working through you, was not uh, it doesn't have any power we don't you start doubting the fact of the holy spirit so concern yourself not with the extension of holiness with the nature of miracles you do not understand and one of the greatest realizations is i know nothing it took me 50 years to figure it out truly and i got it conceptually at 30 at 40 i started to understand at 50 i now know 55 Concern you not how, nor do you do them. It's not you. It is their extension, far beyond the limits you perceive. Who's there? Who's this there? The sonship, the son of God, God's Holy Spirit, that demonstrates that you do not do them. And in each one that you think you're applying it to is Holy Spirit too. 
And it's the Holy Spirit in all of us that calls us to awakening. Please bear with me for a second. Why should you worry how the miracle extends to all the sun, sonship when you do not understand the miracle itself? The closest you'll get to understanding the miracle is that everything is a miracle. And that the permanence of joy is permanent healed, is permanently healed. That which is permanently joyous cannot suffer. And so a miracle is simply the returning of the localization of body-mind into its essential nature, which is the essence of the capital S, Holy Self, Holy Spirit Self, Holy Son of God Self, which is in a permanent state of joy. And what is joyous cannot suffer, and therefore it cannot suffer, it cannot be ill, it can't be sick, it can't die. That's the closest we get to that understanding. Stop there, don't even go any further. One attribute is no more difficult to understand than its whole. As I've just explained, if miracles are at all, their attributes would have to be miraculous being part of them. And so there's nothing miraculous about miracles. The word itself is a paradoxical euphemism for nonsense. Um, the essence of ourself, which is the essence, the extended essence of God, has in itself the, the essential nature of God. And so our essential nature, which is an extension of God, is permanently healed. It's only in the dream that characters are seen and appear to suffer, die, wither away. In truth, the characters don't exist. In truth, all that exists is your purest essence, the shared being with God. So the idea of a miracle only happens in the dream. In truth, there is no miracle because everything is eternally innocent and perfect in a joyous state of eternal dare I say, bliss. There is a tendency, of course there is, the minute we fell asleep, we do it all the time, to fragment and to be concerned about the truth of just a little part of the whole. And boy, are the dogmatic types so good at this because they want to argue a chapter and a saying and a line. Please explain yourself. Of course, in miracle students, hey, we're so good at this. Our little tribes, you know. Everybody wants to argue and pose his opinion. Can't write an article without somebody having some silly little comment or something stupid to say because they've now read another line and they want to argue their point to show how intelligent they are. Mental masturbation. Just read, agree, don't agree. Do you have, just say thank you. You know, say thank you. Made me think, great comment, you know. Great supposition, great, great summation. Do you have to say, oh, I disagree with you? Who disagrees with who? Who is disagreeing? I say something, you don't like it. It either reinforces it and reinforces in you or it reinforces in you because you disagree with it. Because you agree or disagree. Do you have to comment and put down? Do you have to argue? Do you have to bring in your intellect? But I, yeah. Or some miracle students. Oy. If we're not careful, we turn this thing into a religion. Let's not do that to the word of Christ. Let's not do this to this beautiful message of true hope, the remembrance of ourself. And this is but a way of avoiding. So we say fragment and then we argue. Or looking away from the whole to what you think you think you might be better able to understand. You're not going to go in there, then you make a science. That's what the human being has done, especially in the world of psychology or meta-psychology or parapsychology. But this is but another way in which you still try to keep understanding to yourself. A better and far more helpful way to think of miracles is this. <laughs> you do not understand them either in part or in whole. Yet they have been done through you. Okay. So think of it this way. The host pipe doesn't water the garden. The water through the host pipe waters the garden. You're the host pipe. Not special. You're just a host pipe. Therefore, you understand, your understanding 
cannot be necessary. Yet it is still impossible to accomplish what you do not understand. And so there must be something in you that does understand. And it's that something which we're all trying to reach. Don't you, while you're trapped in body-mind identification, while you have any attention in this world, while you have any attachment to this world, is a sure sign that you're an ego mind. Let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. Let it be done through you. And every time it's done through you, a little more of that little ego dissolves, the shadow dissolves and the light of awareness that flows through as the Holy Spirit of God flows through you and does the healing, which means the restoring back to what it always is, always has been, always will be. To you, the miracle cannot seem natural because what you have done to hurt your mind has made it so unnatural that it does not remember what it is, what is natural to it. What is natural to it is the eternal bliss of joy in which nothing has ever changed and nothing ever can. And when you are told what is natural, you cannot understand it because you have no recognition of it. The recognition of the part as a whole, so imagine a water droplet, Take it out of the ocean, look at its DNA, and then put the same dipstick into the, into the ocean, same DNA. The ocean is the DNA of a water droplet. The water droplet is the DNA of the ocean, one and the same. The recognition of the part as a whole and of the whole in every part is perfectly natural. So within you, the essence of God is there. And so if one could evaluate and inspect and put under a microscope your essence and God's essence, it would be the same. For that, for it is the way God thinks and what is natural to him is natural for you. But since you don't remember what you are and you've forgotten what you are and you have no idea what you are, it seems unnatural to you. But a miracle, which means a state of permanent healing for everything, zero death, is the most natural thing. But don't you think you decide who should live and who should die because you now want them in your life because you don't want them to die and you think they suffer if they die. The only thing that suffers that when something dies is the observer who's still trapped in the ego and needs that person to aggrandize their self-identity. Holy natural perception would show you instantly that the order of difficulty in miracles is, never mind, quite, completely Sorry, Jesus, I'm changing your words. Completely impossible, for it involves a contradiction of what miracles mean. Because a miracle is just natural. And if you could understand their meaning, their attributes could hardly cause you perplexity. Why? Because it's completely natural. You have done miracles. Hell, you created the whole universe. Dream big. But it is quite apparent that you have not done them alone. because the universe, when you misperceive the energy of God still flowing through you, the essence of God still flowing through you, allows you to extend your energy. But you misperceive it and you see it as planets, solar systems, galaxies, suns, stars, moons, but what, and then bodies. But what you're really seeing is light reflect, reflected through the filters of your egoic mind. When the filters of your mind dissolve, what do you see? Self is light, God is light, everything is pure light, light is love. Non-duality. If you don't fully comprehend non-duality, this course will seem miraculous and almost unattainable. You have succeeded whenever you have reached another mind and joined with it. And joined with it lovingly. When two minds are joined as one and share one idea equally, the first link in awareness of the sonship as one has been made. Now, this line is vital. This is such an... When two minds are joined as one and share one idea equally, and you're probably thinking to yourself, but yeah, I've shared ideas with others before, and we agree. To share one idea equally, there's only one idea which can be equally shared. And that is the knowing of oneself as the extension of God's love. Love is the only idea. Another way of saying love is I am that I am. 
awareness of being aware itself. So the only idea that can be shared equally when two minds are joined, okay, and two minds are joined because there's only one mind, and one idea equally is the Son of God, you. The first link in the awareness, here it is. Now you start to see this coming through more and more. The awareness of being aware of the sonship as one has been made. There's only one son of God. So when the Bible said God only has one son, the Bible was right. But what the Bible did is personified it and projected it as the singularity of a body-mind identification in the dream called the figure Jesus. Not realizing that when Jesus ascended, poof, fear the silence. Jesus dissolves, no longer exists other than a historical figmentation of our imagination. And the essence of Jesus is what remains. And the essence of Jesus is the same essence as every living being in this entire universe. And that essence is its, its, at its very core, it's its cent, essential nature, the essential nature of God. And that essence is the extension of God's essence. One. One. There's no duality in God when you have made this joining as the Holy Spirit bids you and have offered it to him to use as he sees fit. His natural perception of your gift enables him to understand it. And you use his understanding on, on your behalf. Okay. And so he'll do it for you. He'll tell you what to say. And so your prayer, which brings me to the Francis of Assisi prayer prayer is father i choose to be an instrument of your love which means miracles where would you have me serve to whom would you have me speak where would you have me go what would you have me say how would you have me serve and you're constantly asking the holy spirit show me and you don't act until you've been given vision on how to and until then just be quiet and just be there it is impossible to convince you of the reality of what has clearly been accomplished through your willingness while you believe that you must understand it or else it is not real. It is happening all the time. And if it wasn't for the love in you, you wouldn't exist. So the miracles are already happening just as you sit and listen to this video. How can faith in reality be yours while you are, doesn't say it, but I'll add it, hell bent, hell bent on making it unreal. Okay. And are you really safer in maintaining the reality of illusions than you would be in joyously accepting the truth for what it is and giving thanks for it? Thank God that you've never left his mind. Thank God that you've just dreamt this up. Thank God that there's only one son and you are a temporal, ethereal projection of that one son's dreaming mind in space and time and illusions that never really happened because you but travel through a time that's never existed from a place to a place that's never you've never left because you are that which is the love of god the very essence the truth of you how beautiful is this the truth of you is the love of god honor the truth that has been given you and be glad you do not understand it. Miracles are natural to the one who speaks for God. Miracles are natural because it's the essence of God flowing through God's Holy Spirit. For his task is to translate the miracle into the knowledge which it represents, meaning that it happened through you and which is hidden to you because you cannot know it while you know that as reality. Let his understanding of the miracle be enough for you. That's it. And do not turn away from all the witnesses as you see people transform, teacher for God, that he has given you to his reality. And the reason you're given what appears to be students is so that you know that it's traveling through you. As they shift, know that it's in you. But you cannot see it because it's essence, not physical. No evidence will convince you of the truth of what you do not want and what don't we want. We're so afraid of God because 
surrendering to God means letting go, sacrificing, in our opinion, which is simply letting go, but sacrificing the body-mind identification. And that means that no more stories. You won't ever remember having existed. There's no mommy and daddy in heaven or doggy and sister and brother and spouse and child. I know you love your children. Your child died in heaven. Oh, but I want to go and meet my child. Your child is one with you in the essence, which is the essence of God. You return knowingly as the son of God to God, where you join with what once was Jesus, the Christ mind, and you join with everyone in the world in the highest possible way, in complete unconditional love. What else would you want? It, it is joy beyond our wildest comprehension. Yet your relationship with him is real. And it is real because you know this. Let me tell you how you know it. Can you take a breath right now? Are you aware of your brain thinking? Can you feel your heart beating? Can you feel the blood going through your veins? No, it's happening. And you're breathing, you're alive. Does it mean that it's not true? You're not alive because you can't hear your heart beat and you don't see your brain processing and you can't feel the blood going through your veins and you, can't, you, know, you don't know how your liver's operating right now and your stomach juices. You're not aware of all of that. And yet you're alive. And yet the very essence of that life, the life spark, which is life itself, which is the God seed in all of us, is God's Holy Spirit and is you. You are God's Holy Spirit. The, you, the real you, not the body-mind. Regard this not with fear, but with rejoicing. The one you called upon is with you. Bid him welcome and honor the witnesses who bring you the glad tithings he has come. What is the witnesses? Those that smile, smile back at you. You smile, the world smiles back at you. You smile with your heart, not with your face. Everybody can smile in their heart. They make great teeth commercials. Colgate. That's not heart smile. A heart smile, you see through the eyes and you, you're aware of it in its presence. It is true, just as you fear, that to acknowledge him is to deny, and this is what we fear, all that you think you know, and all that you think you know that you are. So acknowledge him, acknowledge in the presence of the Holy Spirit. But what you think you know was never, ever true. There's no Pluto, there's no Jupiter, men are not from Mars and women are not from Venus. What gain is there to you in clinging to it and deny the evidence of truth for truth? For you have come too near the truth to renounce it now. And you will. And that's it, because the most powerful force in the universe is your will. And you will yield to its compelling attraction when you will to will thy will. You can delay this now, but only a little while. The host of God, Holy Spirit, inside you as your heart, has called to you, and you have heard, which is why you're sitting here listening to me, or you've dialed in and found me on YouTube. Never again will you be holy without willing not to listen, because it's, it's changed you and it lifts you. And when it gives you proof and the Holy Spirit's always giving you proof and, give, and giving you 8 billion people as witnesses to the truth when they smile back at you. This year is a year of joining in which you, your listening will increase and peace will grow with, it, with its increase. And you can only listen when you're quiet. So remember that first principle. The power of holiness and the weakness of attack are both being brought into your awareness. You are awareness itself. And this has been accomplished in a mind so firmly convinced that holiness is weakness and attack is power. And so if it can change it and it's happening in that mind, imagine what happens when you let go of the idea of attack. Should, this, should not this be a sufficient miracle to teach you that your teacher, capital T, Holy Spirit, is not of you, not of your separate body, mind, identity. But remember also that whatever you listen to, that sorry, whenever you listen to his interpretation, the results have brought you joy. And surely they have, whilst you wouldn't be here, you know, two and a half years into this with me. Would you prefer the results of your interpretation, considering honestly what they have been? It's another way of saying, would you rather be right or would you rather be happy? God wills you better, and what God wills, no man can undo. Could you not look 
with greater charity on whom God loves with perfect love. And whom does God love with perfect love? You, the whole sonship, in exactly the same way, without your interpretation needed. Do not interpret against God's love, for you have many witnesses that speak of it so clearly that only the blind and deaf could fail to see and hear them. And there's nothing more blind than a person whose heart is closed and their ignorant eyes are open and their nonsensical brain is clambering for attention with idiotic, nonsensical, vengeful, ugly, judgmental thoughts. Solution to everything. Silence is golden. If all else fails, get some duct tape, silver. Not quite gold, but it works. This you are determined not to deny what has been given you by God, for that is the only reason he has called you. Because you're special. But because you're special to him. His voice is spoken clearly, and yet you have so little faith in what you've heard. And that voice is that which calls you. It's the reason why you're listening to me, in case you're wondering what voice. Because you have preferred to place still greater faith in the disasters you have made. Put them down, return willingly, and ask to be shown, and he'll give you proof. Today, this here now, let us resolve together to accept the joyful tiding that disaster is not real and that reality is not disaster. Reality is safe and sure and wholly kind to everyone and everything in exactly the same way. There is no greater love than to accept this and be glad. For love asks only that you be happy. Wow. God asks only that you be happy. Choose to be. Choose to not talk about your past. Choose not to think about it. Choose not to bring your obstacles into your mouth and bleh, vomit them into the world and share them with everybody. Because what you speak becomes real for you. Be still. Force yourself not to. When the thought comes, no. Mom, dad, sister, brother, boss. Aunt, dog, cat, no. Be still. Resign. Holy Spirit, I offer this to you. That's it. Don't think it. Don't process it. Don't try and understand it. Don't try and analyze it. Read this line again. There is no greater love than to accept this and be glad. For love asks only that you be happy. Love didn't ask you to dissect it, understand it, do a doctorate on it do a course in it and try and then comprehend why and how and understand it go be still no i am holy spirit show me another way to see this how easy does it get wow but it doesn't work because you haven't given it completely and then you offer it the minute the minute you've offered it you start thinking you meditate oh, meditation sit in a circle hold hands kumbaya mind goes quiet hallelujah jesus Meditation ends, the music ends, the symbols end. Blah, 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 blah. Shh. The most powerful word in the universe, besides the Yah Yahweh, you know, the word Yahweh God, breath in, breath out, the most powerful word in the universe is made by the unseen. Shh. And we'll give you, shh, we'll give you everything that makes for happiness. No, kitty cat, I wasn't calling you. <laughs> you have never been given any problem to the, you have never given any problem to the Holy Spirit. He has not solved for you, nor will you ever do so. Problem is you, you think you give it to the Holy Spirit because you say it in words, but not in deeds. You offer it to the Holy Spirit, and the next thing you attach yourself to a thought. When you offer it to the Holy Spirit, duct tape, earplugs, close eyes, be still. Shh. Offer, be still. You have never tried to solve anything yourself and being successful. Nada. Nada is a very powerful spiritual word. It comes from the Tibetan Himalayas. And it 
leopard crawl to South America. Nada. Nada you've done. Zero, zip, zilch, for calling. Nothing. You dreamt big. You dreamt so big, you dreamt up an entire fucking universe that you can't remember. You dreamt so big. Your dream was so real, you forgot you were dreaming. Nothing you do. Nada. Will do anything. Offer it. If you were so clever, how come you're here? She's so spiritual, so special. Why are you here? Why don't you go find rogue teacher? Why don't you go find this nutcase? Why? Because you don't know. So perhaps be still and know I am. Hell, if you'd only read your Bible properly, you wouldn't have to listen to Jesus 360, 669 pages of text. Workbook's easy. Everybody does the workbook. Ooh. Lots of teachings on the workbook. Ooh, let's do the workbook. Understand the fundamentals. Can't do the workbook until you've done the text. It is not time. It is not time. So is it not time? There is no time. So is it not time you start to realize? You brought these facts together and made sense of them. And yet, what sense is there in the world? Look about you. Does this world make sense? Is there anything in this world that makes any sense except listening to me? Send me all your money. Join, join the, the cult. We dance around naked around the sunlight. That's it. That's it. That's the only thing that makes sense. It's all <laughs> the Luigi cult. <laughs> Oops, sorry. He's a loner. Can't join his cult. Only cats allowed. This is the year for the application of ideas that have been given you. New ways of looking at it. For the ideas of mighty forces to be used and not held idly by. They have the power, <clears throat> sorry, they have already proved their power sufficiently for you to place the truth in them whilst you wouldn't be here. And not in their denial. This year, here now, be here now. Invest in truth. Ask to be shown and you shall be given and let it work in peace. Have faith in him, Holy Spirit, who has faith in you completely, because it's the part of you that remembers God. Think what you have already seen and heard and recognize it. Can you be alone with witnesses like these? There's 8 billion witnesses in this world of dreams that you have made up. And so don't try and process and understand and make sense of it. Show up, offer. Don't judge. If you find yourself trying to figure, still, and just be present. Reuben gave us the perfect example of his teacher that came. He was in the hospital. She came and said, hello, how are you? Are you in pain? And then spoke of the weather and whatever else and just showed up, offered. Be still and know I am. I hope this brings clarity. I, know, I will that it brings you clarity. Stop there, do some questions. And now we move on to Course in Miracles, text chapter 16, the forgiveness of illusions. And we move on to 16.3, the reward of teaching. Now, most of you know how I feel about charging money for reminding people of what they already know and have just appeared to forget. So the reward of teaching is certainly not monetary. And um, this is an internal dialogue happening between ourself, Holy Spirit, and the Christ mind as we now start a commune. It's less instructional, more communal in communion with God's Holy Spirit and the Christ mind. We have already learned that everyone teaches and teaches all the time. But you can only teach what you, what you understand you are. So you teach based on what you believe and understand you are. You may have taught well, and yet you may not have learned how to accept the comfort of your teaching. So you see this with a lot of so-called teachers, that they're still struggling with their own Thoughts, demons, shadows, they haven't fully healed or not at the level that they really are to
to be able to just go and be joyously sharing. So be aware that if you really are still struggling, rather go quietly through your teaching, find the one-on-one. -on -one. But even as I say that, I realize that the script is written. And if you do, just be aware that you are going to be shown your mirrors as you transcend towards the miracle mind of the Christ mind. If you will consider what you have taught and how alien it is to what you thought you knew, you will be compelled to realize that your teacher came from beyond your thought system. And I don't know a single person who hasn't read this course and has gone and has at some stage said, there's no way a human could have written because it's just so beyond our wildest comprehension. Therefore, he could look upon it fairly and perceive it was untrue, that which you thought was real. He must have done so from a basis of a very different thought system and one with nothing in common with yours, because yours was based on scarcity, separation, body-mind. Have, take, lose, sacrifice. He's is none, none of that. For certainly what he has taught and what you have taught through him have nothing in common with what you taught before he came. Surely all teachers for God realize that. And the results have been to bring peace where there was pain and suffering has disappeared to be replaced by joy. If you know this not, you haven't been listening to your own teaching. You may have taught freedom, but you have not learned how to be free, to really be free of thought. To be free is to be free of thought, to be free of attachment, to be free of identity, body, mind, labels, titles, job descriptions, roles, ideologies, tribes, religion, country, family. I haven't said them in the right order, but this is Christ's mind talking to us now. I have said earlier, this is Jesus Christ's mind. By their fruits, he shall know them and they shall know themselves. For it is certain that you judge yourself according to your teaching. And yet judge not and be not judged because what are you judging? You're judging an illusion that isn't real. You're judging your hallucination making it real and then punishing yourself for what you think you've done and not done. You make other body minds real for you and then you attack them because of the way they treat you or don't treat you or don't accept you. You've made them real, you've made yourself real and then you wonder why you struggle with the paradoxical jostling between right, wrong, good, bad. You've made it real. Nothing in this universe is real. There is no good, there is no bad. There's only right-mindedness, which makes you realize none of it's worth giving any attention to, but to pour yourself lovingly and joyously through your natural passionate talents into the world and to serve. And you, as you serve, you're offering that which flows through you. And as it flows through you, you know you have it. And so by serving, you become it because you can only give what you have. However, because you, you the Son of God, even though you're fractured and you're projected and identified with this localization, even though you think you're separate, inside you is the power to create and to create quickly and instantly. The ego's teachings produces immediate results. Manifestation. You manifest. Dream big and manifest. Because its decisions, and that's the other reason, are immediately accepted as your choice. Now, if the Holy Spirit's teachings produced immediate results, which they do, because its decisions are immediately accepted as your choice, then you would just simply see a miracle nonstop. But you've accepted the ego's teachings as real, and you believe you deserve it. You trap yourself with the thought comes. You don't stand in the first observer position. You're not aware that you're simply awareness. You think it's happening in your mind, not aware of what your mind is. Your mind happens in awareness. You, the identification with the I thought, the 
the thought comes, it attaches, you attach, you jostle, you make it your own, and then you react, you feel, empathize, feel to the thought, and so you make it real for you. Now, if you let all of this go and allow the Holy Spirit to flow through you with no thought and just be that which is aware of being aware itself, not going into the eye, you'd be amazed how the miracle transforms everything as quickly as I click my fingers and a billion times faster. So the ego is acceptance. And this acceptance means this is the problem that you are willing to judge yourself accordingly based on your beliefs. I'm a sinner. I'm guilty. I'm unworthy. I've been abandoned. I've been rejected. I'm being hurt. I've been bullied. I've been, and you bring all of that story. You make it real. If I took all your memories out of your brain right now, who would you be without your story? Would you just die a vegetable? Start slobbering out of your mouth and you wouldn't know what to do. No, the, intel in the intelligence of the system body would continue. You just wouldn't have anything to complain about or to fear because you'd have no memory of the fearful complaining memories you, that you carry with you on your heart as a trophy because woe is me. People just love to be the suffering fool because they get attention, they get pity, they get empathy, and they, we, the ego feeds off emotion. If there was no emotion, the ego would just simply dissolve. The, the fuel of ego is emotion. Emotionally charged thought, emotionally charged body sensation. Cause and effect are very clear in the ego's thought system because all your learning has been directed towards establishing the relationship between them. But it's a give and take relationship. It's not a give continuously relationship as is the relationship with God and his son. And you would not have faith in what you have so diligently taught yourself to believe. Yet remember how much care you've exerted in choosing its witnesses and how you still do, and hence you tell your story nonstop, in avoiding those which spoke for the cause of truth and its effects. Because there's only one true cause, that is God, and there's only one true effect, and that's the extension of his loving kingdom. You, the real you, the essence of you. Does not the fact that you have not learned what you have taught show you that you do not perceive the sonship as one. You want to believe it. You grasp the concept. You understand it. But you haven't transcended understanding into the full knowing until you fully let go of a body-mind idea and, and an attachment to anything and an attachment to our outcomes as well. And does it not also show you that you do not regard yourself as one because one means one sun. That means that all of this universe, every human being out there, are activities in your mind. And when you awaken to the self, which is the extension of God's love, where's the universe now? Where are the people now? What's outside you? What are you but that which is simply the aware, the awareness of being awareness itself? For it is impossible to teach successfully holy without conviction. And it is equally impossible that conviction be outside you. And that's the validation that people need, constant validation. Post stuff on Facebook and wait for the likes. We constantly need validation, conviction to be proved. Yet, if you really knew that infinite bliss of silent self in the silence of the stillness of the mind, the awareness of being aware, you wouldn't look for any other proof. In itself, it is sufficient because it lifts you beyond. I can't explain. There's no word. I, no matter what I say, it's a lie. It's, a, it's a, a concession at best. You could never have taught freedom unless you did believe in freedom. But freedom is not of the body. Freedom is not of, in this body, in this world. Freedom is not financial freedom. Freedom is freedom of thought, no thought. Freedom of fear, no fear. The freedom of past, present, future. Freedom is being present in full awareness in the eternal now, the eternal now. And it must be that what you taught came from yourself. Yet this self, there it is. 
the self. The self is the divine son. This is the dreamer, once awakened as the Christ mind, is the son of God. You clearly do not know and do not recognize it even through its function. So those of you that are new to the course and you've come from dualistic Christian understanding, in Christianity, there's something called the death of self. That is the death of ego. When the course capitalizes the self with an S, it's talking of the Holy Son of God self, the Holy Son of God that has dreamt this dream called the universe, the Holy Son of God, whose essential nature and essence is the extension of God's essential nature and essence, the self that knows itself as one with God, the self that knows you're dreaming, the self which is coming back at you to let so that the idea of separation, body, mind, localization can be let go. And so the self can be released from all of this. So release the idea of a savior, release Jesus, release him. You're not rejecting him. You're not denying him. You're not abandoning him. You're simply releasing him, self, and all billion, eight billion of us release. No one is saving me. No one needs to make me happy. I'm expecting nothing from no one. I return to that self and know I abide, I move and live in God as God abides, moves and lives in me. That's it. It's what Jesus understood when he said, I and my father <coughs> are one. What functions must be there? And since it is there, it functions. Trust. And it is only if you deny what it has done that you could possibly deny its presence. Because it, the self, is another word for self is life, love, energy. And your essence, that self, is the life force of what appears as a body mind. And when you remove the body mind, that life force remains. And that life force is the self, the soul, the spirit that returns to the singularity of self and God. This is it. He has this most magnificent and most powerful line. This is what this course is about. This course is in how to know yourself. What is Jesus' commandment to mankind? Be thyself knowingly and this is what this course does it gets you to let go of the ideas the dogmas the beliefs the values in the belief in body mind the belief in separate body mind the belief even the savior as an objectified separate body mind and the realization that god's love is extending eternally and there's only one of us you have taught what you are, but, but have not let what you are teach you, because then you would be yourself knowing. You have been very careful to avoid the obvious and not to see the real cause and effect relationship that is perfectly apparent. What you believe, you see. What you attack, attacks you. What you reject, you project. And what you reject, then projects back at you and you never get rid of it. You cannot get rid of ideas because it's in your mind. You cannot be getting, you can't be gotten rid of because you're an idea in God's mind, not your body mind, the essence of what you are. You're not made in God's image. God has no image. There's, God is not I'm age. God is pure essence. We're an extension of that essence. Bible mistranslated it. We're not made in God's image. God doesn't make anything. God extends and God's extension is pure creation. We make what we call the creation is the making of the universe. We make it. Material is made, matter made, made manifest. God's love extended, nothing made, pure extension of that, the only thing that exists, that which is that. Yet within you is everything you taught, everything you taught. So, who is watching and listening and reading these pages? So if I ask you, what is? Who's listening and watching and reading these pages? The only answer you can give is I am. With what are you listening, reading, watching these pages? 
and you're going to say with your mind. Oh, my mind is, okay, really? Your mind is? Find your mind. Go on, find your mind. Try very hard, find your mind. Let's make it easier. Find the thoughts in your mind. The minute you have a thought, try and find it. As you think, where is it? Let's make it simple. Let's give it an objectified quality. Yellow giraffe. See the thought? Now find the thought. Where is the thought happening? You think it's in your mind. Find your mind. Let's go back to when you were 10 years old. See yourself at your birthday party. Who's at your birthday party? You're going to say, I am. Who's witnessing you at the birthday party? You're going to say, I am. So you at the birthday party witnessed your birthday party as I am. And you now here witness yourself at the birthday party as I am. What is that I am? As that I am, which witnessed you as a 10-year-old and witnessed you here now, as that I am changed, the activities of the device did, the person you were changed, but that which observes you right now, has that changed? Are thoughts and activities and sensations not appearing in that which is I am? And another word for I am is awareness. Energy, essence, without content, just pure energy. The awareness of being aware is aware of thought, aware of that which you call your mind. So your mind, your thoughts, your body, throughout your entire life, exist as activities in that which is awareness. But if you turn to the pure essence of awareness and let go of all activity, what remain? Awareness, aware of itself. And that awareness is the very essence of the self, the very essence of God's essence. In that pure, silent blissfulness of being, the essence resides as pure, silent awareness. And you're aware of this is no new concept to you. That awareness is God itself. You can't grasp it because your prior beliefs were some objective entity somewhere out there, being somewhere there, something that you had to return to, not realizing it's always here now. What can it be that has not learned? What is it that hasn't learned? It must be this part that is really outside yourself, not by your own projection, but in truth. Because where is the body when you were 10 years old? Where is the body when you witness, observe from pure awareness? Did you realize that when you went into this exercise of just being aware, you lost all sensation and focus on the body? You were so busy looking for the mind the thought. And it is this part that you have taken in you that is not you. The very part of you that is outside yourself. Let's go through this again. Yet within you is everything you taught. What can it be that has not learned? The false you, the separate you. It must be this part that is really outside yourself. It doesn't actually exist not by your projections, but in truth, because you can't find it, even as you've tried, as it, isn't it, even ever, as I've mentioned these words to you. And it is this part that you have taken in that is not you, and yet you believe is you. What would you accept into your mind does not really change it. The I am has never been changed. No matter what activities change, that which I am observing the activities observing the thoughts, sensations, beliefs, emotions, that doesn't change. Illusions are but beliefs. Illusions are but thoughts. And what is not there, a belief is a thought. 
and all illusions are thought and they're not actually there and what and the seeming conflict between truth and illusions can only be resolved by separating yourself from the illusion and not from the truth let go let god so be aware of being aware and let go of the illusions not from the truth your teaching has already done this for the holy spirit is part of you created by god he left neither god nor his creation the sonship he is both god and you as you are god and him together meaning you are the eternal extension of that you're not god but you're one with god and holy spirit as god is one with holy spirit in you for god's answer to the separation your dream in other words added more to you than you try to take away because as you separated you moved into darkness and the only fact that you can see space time is because god entered the dream and gave you the ability to recognize what you are through the experience of what you're not but he had to give you the free will to experience yourself as as you're not in order for you to want to remember the joy that you are because something wanted the joy that mean that something was that holy spirit the essence of your christ mind calling you to return to the full knowing of yourself as the joy love and peace of god he protected both your creations and you together he didn't destroy the universe for you your creations is the universe keeping one with you what you would exclude because you excluded everything else from yourself not realizing it's all you and they will take the place of what you took to in what you took in to replace them they are quite real as a part of your of the self you do not know so everything in the world is real it's just misperceived it's an hallucination what you don't realize what you look upon is just a projection of you when you remember you all of it collapses as the one i am and that i am returns to god god takes the final step they communicate to you through the holy spirit through the memory of god in you and their power and gratitude to you to you for their creation they offer gladly to your teaching and yourself who is their home so the entire universe and everyone in it lives in you as you abide and live in god and therefore everyone lives and abides and lives in god you who are witness okay are also the host of god and when you choose to return from witness and return there's no more witness there's just the extension of god you who are host to god are also host to them you host to this entire planet love your creations don't deny them don't denounce them don't judge them because all of it are aspects of you fractured you're seeing it from a localized point but you understand you're the dreamer now you're accepting your role as the dreamer even though you appear to be localized and you accept all your creations and they return to you and they'll return to you in glad joyous experience in your relationship with them because they remind there will be mirrors of your remembrance so when you remember you the love and joy of god you will see the love and joy of god in all your siblings for nothing real has ever left the mind of its creator neither if you will ever left god and your creations haven't left your mind you're just misperceiving them once you perceive them correctly with the holy spirit's mind you'll see them as pure light you'll see them as christ and what was not there what was not real body minds mountains planets universes was never there you are not two selves in conflict there's no good wolf and bad wolf what is beyond god nothing if you hold him and who hold, and and whom he holds are the universe all of it's you okay although you see it as planets it's all just pure light all else must be outside where nothing is and therefore there's nothing else and this brings us to that first line in the course of miracles in course of miracles nothing real can be threatened nothing unreal exists here in lies the peace of god you have taught this and far and and from far off in the universe you who comes far off from the universe meaning not here now because this illusion is not true yet not beyond yourself because it's all within yourself the witnesses to your teachings have gathered to help you learn because they are the parts of you that remember reflected back at you 
their gratitude is joined with yours and God's to strengthen your faith in what you have taught. Together we are one in God. For what you taught is true. There is only one holy son of God. Alone you stand outside your teaching and apart from it. So you cannot be alone. To be alone is to not recognize you've never left God and therefore to be dreaming of illusions. But with them you must learn that you but taught yourself and learned from the conviction you shared with them, your holy siblings, your mighty companions. This year, you will begin to learn and make learning commensurate with teaching. It will give you proof. You have chosen this by your own willingness to teach. Teach, teacher for God. Though you seem to suffer for it, the joy of teaching will yet be yours. I can promise you it will because I am loving I didn't love anything. For the joy of teaching is in the learner who offers it to the teacher in gratitude and shares it with him. As you learn your gratitude to yourself, to the part of you that has never forgotten what you are, who, capital, the son of God. So the self, the son, capitalized, teaches you what he is. He is you and, and will grow and help you honor him. And you will learn his power and strength and purity and love him as his father does, because that means you will love yourself. True self-love is the knowing of God as your essence. That your essential nature is the identical essential nature to God. How beautiful is that? Your truest nature is unconditional love. His kingdom has no limits and no end. And there is nothing in him that is not perfect and eternal. And here it is. All this is you. And nothing outside of this is you. You are God's power and his glory. You are his kingdom. To your most holy self. See, we've now replaced Holy Spirit. Word, concept. You've collapsed Holy Spirit. It's now the mind, your mind. It's your mind infused with your Christ mind. And the Christ mind, Holy Spirit mind is the holy self. All praise is due for what you are, for what you are as the Son of God, and for what he is, and what is he, that which brought you the memory of the Son of God, who created you as, he, as you are. For what is he? He is God himself. Sooner or later must everyone bridge the gap he imagines exists between his selves. Sooner or later do we bridge the gap between ourselves and everybody else in the world. Everyone in the world are fractured parts of your self. They're yourselves. You teach only but yourself. And that's the fact the self teaches you when you dissolve the identification of selves. Each one builds this bridge, which carries him across the gap. As soon as he is willing to expend some little effort on behalf of bringing or bridging it. In other words, letting the illusions go. These little efforts are powerfully supplemented by the strength of heaven in which you live and by the united will of all who make heaven what it is, the sonship, being joined within it. And so the one who would cross over is literally transported there. And in actual fact, you've never left. Your bridge is builded stronger than you think and your foot is planted firmly on it. That's the bridge between awareness of this and awareness of being pure awareness. Have no fear that the attraction of those who stand on the other side, wait for you, will not, will not draw your safe, will not draw you safely across. Sorry, let me read that line again. Have no fear that the attraction of those who stand on the other side and wait for you will not draw you safely across, for they will. For you will come where you should be and where you always have been and always are, where yourself the memory of you, you and God awaits you. So now bear in mind, we're now bringing it in. So Holy Spirit's fusing with our mind. Christ mind is becoming our highest mind, our highest self. The Holy Spirit is the essence of God as our energy, as our life force, as our Holy Spirit. And we are remembering ourself as the dreamer. And as we remember ourselves as the dreamer, we remember we're dreaming and the memory of God returned. And God takes the final step and brings us 
into the full awareness that we've never left. We simply had a silly little dream that never happened in time. Never happened in eternity, only appeared to happen in time. I hope this brings clarity in your understanding of the course. Um, I'll stop there in the group. We, we will continue with qu questions and answers. And then tomorrow night on Wednesday night, we will continue. And tomorrow night we will do because we've got tomorrow and Thursday. So tomorrow we'll do the illusions and reality of love and the choice for completion, both long sections. We'll do that. And then on Thursday, we'll do the bridge to the real world and end of illusions. I'll stop there, take questions, be blessed, and see you again soon and tomorrow.